Greetings YouTube. Here is the companion video to my video I did about the Island of the Dead that was controlled by the Lich King. Now, the campaign I said was set in the Forgotten Realms on Faerun and mostly in the nation of Cormir. And the party was comprised of retainers of a baroness, a woman that most people have referred to as the Lady. Silver-haired, beautiful, powerful, and she was very refined. Um, they never really actually came to the conclusion positively, but they always suspected that she was more than just what she appeared, which was an attractive human woman. Um, in actuality, she was a silver dragon, um, playing her own game and her own politics and the long plans that only dragons and lich kings could achieve. Um, and having all the player characters be retainers of this one person basically meant that there was a justification for pulling the group together. Um, there was, you know, this is the, you've, been, you've been thrown together because this is what the lady wants. She has her own reasons. She wants you to function as a team. Um, and over time, they began to have more and more independence from her as they grew more and more powerful, but they never lost her as a real patron and, and as a social contact, and she was a good social contact. Um, and at one point, they realized they had to visit the, the Isle of the Dead for their own purposes, but the lady also gave them a mission. She needed a rose that had been touched by a lich, frozen by the touch of a lich, um, for something. She didn't really said what, said what, what or why. Um, she gave them a letter of introduction and sent them on their way. Now, the main character, as I mentioned, or one of the main characters was Tanner, a half-elven fighter mage, and his girlfriend was a necromancer, and she would not pass up the chance of visiting the Isle of the Dead, so she kind of attached herself to the entourage. Um, and they had an entourage. This group had, everyone had at least one person that was hireling or a follower or, or someone they just tagged along they couldn't get rid of. Some had two. Um, and this let me have a fair amount of flexibility in what I could throw at them. It also meant that their steeds and, and things were guarded when they were busy. And in case someone was out of the um, pay a player character, wasn't available for some reason, they were off doing some other side venture or something, one of the NPCs could step in and be played by the, the, by the, by the character, by the player. So it gave us a fair amount of flexibility. It's been my experience in first and second edition. Having retainers and things like that was much more common than it was in third edition. Um, and I have no idea if it's common in fourth edition. I don't really care. It's not all that common in Pathfinder either. It tends to be the, the core uh, groups, you know, four or five player characters. Um, so the characters had a rousing adventure between getting to where they were, to the coast near the island, and then getting a ship to the island, um, and then getting to the island itself. And a number of the player characters were kind of creeped out by the fact that they were on an island uh, that was heavily populated by rogues and pirates and scallywags and undead. And especially seeing as one of them was a good aligned cleric who really didn't like undead and suddenly to find herself surrounded by them and she can't do a darn thing about it because you don't want to piss off the Lich King because you'll end up being part of his plantation force, like it or not. Um, and because of they had the letter of introduction, they were able to get themselves a personal audience with the Lich King, which achieved their freezing the rose thing. They got to have dinner with him, because he was a very gracious host. Of course, he didn't himself eat. And nor did, surprisingly, his companion, who looked a lot like a human woman, um, who passed herself off as his guard. In actuality, she was a mithril golem that had a human soul bound to its body. So she was more than she appeared and very good at keeping him keeping him alive, besides the fact you know he he was a lich, and he had a lot of power. Um, he was a he was more of a plot device than ever going to be an NPC. You know, uh, no one was ever going to be dumb enough to take out the Lich King on his island. It just wasn't going to happen. Um, and since they needed to get to the wild sections of the island, they had to get themselves a license, which he just waived the fee. They did have a letter of introduction from a very powerful person, um, and sent them on their way. And as they fought their way through this jungle environment, which I mean completely, I mean this no one had lived in this thing for like eight or nine hundred years, um, and it had been heavily populated by all kinds of magical beasts and aberrations, some which had just survived for a single generation, but some that adapted and were able to breed and had changed the ecosystem of that island significantly. 
But as they moved further and further away from the settlement, things got more and more normal until you were basically in a fantasy D&D jungle environment, which is kind of wacky. It's not going to be as you know, normal as our jungles, which are dangerous in and of themselves. But it's going to be, you know, what you kind of expect when you're in a jungle in a fantasy setting. And eventually they ran into a tribe of goblins. Now the goblins were interesting because the goblins legends said that it was the goblin king, and they had a name, I can't remember what it was, that drove all the humans away and sent them to the other side of the wall. They were convinced that it was their mighty hero that had driven the humans from the land so that the goblins themselves could control it. Now the adventurers didn't dissuade them from this belief. They weren't a threat to the group. And they were really, really good at living in this jungle. They may have been Paleolithic. They had no metal of their own. They used stone and bone and things like that. Um, but they were the best guides and able to survive in this environment with nothing, literally, except a few stone chips. Um, so they used them as aids and assistants and grew quite fond of the group. And when they left, they were better. The, the, the clan, the, the tribe was far better off than it was when they'd gotten there because they'd passed around a few artifacts, which were just metal tools, which would, could be used for generations and would become powerful items in, in the eyes of the goblins. Um, eventually they found the ruins that they were looking for, and I believe they were going there to find a king's tier, which was supposed to have been a tier of a monarch who it was frozen as he grieved um, over some great slight or great sorrow, something like that. And the player character needed it for a magic item, a set of bracers, I believe, if I'm not, in, if I'm incorrect. He had to find two king's tears to activate the bracers to their full power. Um, and the adventure itself, when they got there, was it's a jungle exploring Indiana Jones kind of thing, and I had a good time. There was a, a temple they had to get into, and I based a lot of it off of the actual um, pyramids in uh, in Egypt, uh, which I have a fair amount of information on in my head at the time, and well, I have more of it now. Um, and so I, I, I let them have a, a certain level of depth of really exploring this place that was old and old and trapped and populated with undead things that weren't under the control of the Lich King. Um, but all said and told, they've had a thoroughly good time here, um, and when they went to go back home to return to Cormir, the main character, one of the main characters, uh, girlfriend, then Necromancer, refused to leave. She's like, I'm not leaving this place. This is my dream. This is where I've always wanted to be. This is an opportunity to learn with the best and the brightest Necromancers that the world has ever seen. You know, and she prayed that she would someday become, a, you know, an assistant to the Lit King himself. So there was a heartfelt parting, you know, parting of such sweet sorrow kind of thing. Um, and they had, of course, a little few side adventures where they had a run-in with a number of vampires that had been, um, basically attempting to seduce uh, some of the player characters because they're bored and that's what they do. I kind of played off the whole vampire masquerade angle with that one. Um, it was a brother and sister pair, if I remember correctly. Um, so overall, that adventure was a lot of fun. I enjoyed using the Isle of the Dead. Uh, the adventure was a great you know, time to whip out the classic pulp stuff. I could throw lots of aberrations. I took standard monsters and I gave them wacky mutations uh, a la Gamma World. I actually used Gamma World mutations, I believe. Um, so I was able to really have a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, unpredictability in this particular adventure. And of course, they, we still creeped out some of the player characters and the, and the players themselves because they were surrounded by undead and there's nothing they could really do about it. Um, they didn't like it at all. In fact, the, the priestess, when she got finally, finally left, she did numerous purification ceremonies to make sure that she didn't take any taint from this island with her. Um, but all in all, it was a great trip. I had a nice time running that adventure. I, I kind of sad that I never got to use the island again, but the campaign just didn't head in that direction. Um, but it was great. Um, and again, the island that it could be put anywhere, and the, and the adventure plots I have given you could be used at any level if you so chose, um, so long as you know they could get enough money or enough contacts to get themselves over the wall. Um, it, it is dangerous, but you know you could scale it any way you want. You know, if you're, if you're a GM, you're God. Uh, so overall, it was a lot of fun. It was a good time. The, the the players enjoyed themselves. I enjoyed myself. So you know, what more can you ask for than that?